Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Barg. I'm the City Administrator for the City of Marshfield. This is our post-council meeting news conference. We do this after every meeting of the Marshfield Common Council, recapping the discussion, the decisions, and, and the impact it might have on you as a uh, resident of our community. So this is for the meeting held on Tuesday night, June 14th, and we'll be going over some of the agenda items, not every one, but covering the ones that we think maybe have the most impact or effect on, on our citizens. So starting out, we had a public hearing on some street projects, and we do this from time to time. Uh, we encourage residents who are in areas that are affected by road upgrades and those kind of projects to be in com you know, communication with our engineering staff along the way to come to the public information meetings to be able to, to have those more informal conversations. But this is that last moment where the council is uh, being asked to adopt a final resolution ultimately after the public hearing to certify the amount that the residents, the abutting property owners will be charged for the work done on their streets. So in other words, if we're doing your residential street, most of the costs will be picked up by the city, but there'll be a small portion on either side of the roadway that will be uh, assessed to the benefiting property owners. Uh, they were held last night for uh, the East 17th project. That's our big reconstruction from Maple to Peach over in the area of the uh, fairgrounds. Uh, that's exciting. We're going to get that done this summer after a lot of years of having that on the back burner. And then also for 13 sections, some of them very small, but 13 sections of street that were done what we call an asphalt mill and overlay. And that's where we grind up the existing surface and lay, lay it down where it was with another maybe two inches of asphalt. Uh, we don't get the same duration or, or length of time that it's going to work as we would to reconstruct it, but we buy another 15 years or or maybe more if we're lucky uh, to have a good surface for driving for our residents. So there was no one there to address the public hearing, although uh, Ed Wagner, one of our council members, did raise a couple of questions and concerns that were mentioned by one of his constituents. Uh, they can be looked at by the, uh, the city engineer and, and his staff. Ultimately, later in the, in the meeting, though, the, the assessments were approved uh, by the, the council, so they will be now implemented on the, the, uh, the tax bills uh, going forward, if not paid. And again, if you're a resident and you're, you're hearing this, please know that if there's a project that affects your area, that you can either pay in full uh, right up front or you'll have 10 years to, uh, to make installment payments to pay the, the portion that is your responsibility. Well, then we moved into the, the regular portion of the meeting, um, actually got down into consent agenda, and a number of items were approved under consent. As we say very often in this program, these are things that come from the, the committees, typically the Board of Public Works and the Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee, those are the two main council subcommittees. Half of the council serves on one, half on the other. Sometimes plan commission or some other body will have uh, items bubble up separately under their minutes, but these were the ones that we dealt with uh, on June 14th. Under Public Works, we did approve uh, a bid for the, uh, the replacing the boiler at the Second Street Community Center. That's done its, its time. Remember, the Second Street Community Center was the former library, and this boiler had long outlived its usefulness. So we need to upgrade it, and uh, that, that was approved. It came in, I believe, under budget. There was also a lot of discussion about the minutes from the Board of Public Works meeting because uh, there's been an item about the, uh, the project along Lincoln, uh, up in that area between Fifth and Adler, and our desire to get a, a trail in there maybe and, and get some additional pieces of right-of-way from abutting neighbors. Uh, well, it went back to the Board of Public Works. They ultimately came up with the idea of maybe putting sidewalk along the west side where we have the, the right-of-way and maybe going with a trail portion as, as well for the, the balance, at least to get something in there for walking purposes. Uh, staying in the, in the right of way, staying out of the public property, out of the private property, since at least there was one resident, maybe more, that, that didn't wish to sell to the city, which is fine. I uh, totally understand that. But um, as a result, we're looking forward to this project. It's 80% it's paid by federal and state government monies. So that's good for the city to get that upgrade done of Lincoln uh, from 5th to Adler. Also under Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee, we did approve the change of our banking services provider. For many years, we've had uh, Community State Bank of Loyal, I'm sorry, Citizen State Bank of Loyal, my apologies, and they've done a great job for us. We, we just re-upped with them back in 2019, but we did another, uh, did another RFP, which is Request for Proposals, uh, about a month or two ago, had four local banks make proposals, and ultimately the, uh, the team that, that reviewed it and then the Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee had recommended approval to, to change providers to Forward Bank, uh, that they had the best proposal in terms of interest rates and fees and those types of things. And there was a lot of discussion that, about it at the council level, but ultimately the council did vote in favor of uh, changing to Forward Bank. So our current agreement with Citizen State Bank for our, our banking services here at the city expires on July 31st. So we'll be working out the finality of an agreement with uh, Forward, and as of August 1st, we will be with Forward Bank 
for the, citizen, the city's uh, banking account. Um, those are the main items that came from the committees. There are some, there are some changes in staffing that we'll maybe talk more about in the, in the weeks ahead. Uh, but at this point, there are just some things being talked about for sending to our, our uh, compensation consultant for possible review as we look at making some adjustments at the front counter area. Getting down to the main business, we had a presentation from uh, Jackie Meesh. She's with uh, Vandewall Associates. Uh, Jackie and her team have been working with uh, city planning staff, including Stephen Wiley, our city planner, who does a great job. And uh, an ad hoc committee has been involved, and I, I got to give them a lot of kudos. They've had many meetings. And this is about the West 2nd Street Corridor Plan. And again, I know we talk about this a lot, but you might be new to the program. Uh, a few years ago, we had the idea of making 2nd Street through the downtown area, going either side, a corridor with uh, some really some improvements, decorative, aesthetic, but also trying to get more vitality where we can in terms of redevelopment and those types of things. Well, our first step was actually the first two steps were number one, getting uh, the area from Maple to, to uh, Chestnut, that's one block either side of Central, redone. We made them into one ways. We got uh, some decorative street trees and, and, and I think benches as well. Uh, and that, that's a great improvement for the downtown. Some people were concerned about one way streets, but I think they've all gotten used to it for the most part now. The, the other thing that tied to that came right behind it was the Wenzel Family Plaza, that, that incredible amenity with a water feature for kids, with concerts and activities and people having picnics out there. But if you drive by that, uh, that spot across from the post office, it's really fun to see people enjoying summertime here in Wisconsin. So that really was the heart of what we've done so far. Well, what we want to do is take that to the next step and go west of the post office area, west of Chestnut, out towards Stephen J. Miller Park. And so Vanderbilt has been helping us as to what could that look like if we're able to work with some of the property owners and, and maybe some lands that the city already, already owns, what would we try to do? Would we try to create more residential, more commercial, uh, office space, whatever? And so that plan is going forward. It's been reviewed now by a lot of people, the Economic Development Board, Plan Commission, CDA. Uh, there have been public uh, input meetings, public uh, you know, residential conversations. People have been engaged with letters to give their input. So I think we've come a long ways. We're not to the finish line yet. The council had a few questions after Jackie made a presentation, but I think by and large they like the plan. Now by saying they like the plan, that doesn't mean they're committed to everything in the plan, where it says, well, the city could spend money to do this or spend money to do that. That's still yet to be determined, but we'll be bringing it back to the council now on June 28th at the next regular meeting, looking for the council to embrace it as a plan, you know, to give uh, approval to the concept plan that this is good for the community, this is what they want to work toward in the coming years, and then we'll look at some of the implementation items and, and how we can do it, how much we can afford to do, will it be in stages, what part involves the city, what part involves private property owners and others, uh, but it's an exciting prospect to look at more redevelopment in what I call the northwest part of the downtown area. Um, I think people are looking forward to seeing uh, what, what could happen in the next 5, 10, 20 years in uh, downtown Marshfield. Uh, after that, we had uh, the second reading and approval of a couple ordinances that were fairly minor in nature. One was some small changes to the building code, and the other was uh, allowing a zoning change to permit a duplex at, uh, at uh, 1104 Daigie Street, an area where there's apparently, you know, it sounds like there's a mix of uses around there. There's single family, there's also uh, two families. So the plan commission and council felt this was a reasonable rezoning request and uh, they, they did approve it at the meeting. After that we did have the approvals of resolutions tied to the um, public hearings I mentioned before about the, uh, the, the, the assessments, the special assessments to property owners for the, the street work being done. Uh, we're trying to do as much street work as we can. Your know, money is tight. Uh, Two million dollars we try to do every year in, in mill in place and overlay work. And even when we can afford to budget that, uh, $2 million doesn't go as far as it used to, especially with the, uh, you know, the inflation that we're seeing now. We've got ARPA funds from the government, the federal government, and we've targeted a lot of that for streets. We've actually reserved some of our overage unallocated funds from ARPA for street projects because we are seeing, in some cases, 15 to 20 percent uh, over what we budget because of the inflation happening across the country. So we want to be able to keep streets moving forward. That's a big thing that our residents want to see more than anything uh, is uh, street work being done to, to fix the potholes and more importantly to, to rebuild streets that are in need. Then Dan Kinnick, our Public Works Director, uh, presented the what is the final version now of our capital improvement plan, the major spending we, we look to do in 2023 to 2027 and how it would be funded. We talk a lot about the borrowing component of this. We're going to borrow about $20 million over five years to do this, about $4 million a year. But there's a lot of other funding that comes into those major projects to, to help finance them. We have grants, we have uh, donations, we have room tax money that comes when people 
stay at our lodging facilities. Some of that money comes to the city for, for uh, the projects that we do, especially in park and rec and the zoo. So there's a whole lot of different funding possibilities that come into the mix. Anyway, there were a couple minor changes since the last meeting, but the council did vote for that. So it's online. The final version should be out there soon, I would think, but there's very little difference from the original one that was proposed in early May. So go out on our website, uh, ci.marshfield.wi.us, and look at how we plan to spend money in the next few years. A lot of it is based on redoing streets, but there's a lot of other projects to, to keep up our buildings and facilities and equipment that you find in that plan as well. And let us know if you have any questions or concerns about what you see. The next two items were presented by me. Uh, the first one was a report from the pay compression team. And if you're a newer viewer, you're probably thinking, what is a pay compression team? Well, last summer it was brought to our attention that in the fire and police departments, we've gotten to the point where, in many cases, the, uh, the non-represented employees, the, the, the people who are in the unions, are uh, getting to the point where their pay is close to the, the management positions, the people who are the chief, deputy chief, folks like that. So trying to look at how we can provide a little bit more separation, because what they're finding in those departments is that they're seeing fewer people apply for those management positions. Fewer people are seeking to become the higher level spots because their pay is already maybe fairly close to what they would get if they take on the higher level position and, and without the headaches, without the, the responsibility. So we've been looking as a team now, we, I think we've met maybe half a dozen times, trying to figure out how to help provide a little bit more separation there so that people want to aspire, they want to apply for management positions in those departments. So I brought the report there and I went through some of the things that we've talked about as possibilities, but the main thing I focused on is whether or not we want to do a, a compensation market update. Now back in 2017 into early 2018, we worked with a company called McGrath in Northern Illinois to redo our compensation plan. And if you look online, you'll see that there's, there are pay grades, many of them, and you, maybe you'll see pay grade number whatever, and on that number you'll see four or five positions that have banded, been banded, so to speak, at the same level. So they, their pay is starting from the same spot, ending at the same spot as they go through the steps because their duties, responsibilities, expectations, level of education, experience required, whatever, uh, is fairly closely tied. So, but after time goes by, you know, you have inflation, you have jobs get valued more or less because of people in the market are in need. You know, maybe more people are looking for a certain type of position and can't find them than other positions. So after five years, the plan has always been to go back to our compensation consultant and do what's called a, a market update, where they look at some of our positions, they compare them to other, other employers uh, in the municipal side, you know, predominantly, if not entirely. And then they, they decide whether or not, look, we need to make some adjustments to our compensation plan. And that's one of the things that was talked about the pay compression team, uh, by the, the team, that that might be one step needed to help look at what the fire and police chiefs and deputy chiefs and other management people make. And does it need to be revisited? Along with other city employees, other, other uh, leaders and other staff positions in other departments. Ultimately, the council decided to put that one on hold uh, they, they want to wait till we have a new HR director on board, which is looking like it's probably going to happen here in a couple of weeks, hopefully, you know, by maybe at or shortly after the 1st of July, and that the human resources director should be a part of working with our, our consultant and me in terms of, you know, coming back to the council again with this recommendation. They did say I could come back later in the summer after some of these things have happened, those conversations that I just mentioned, and perhaps, you know, bring this back again. It would be about $25,000 to do a full market update on our compensation plan, 16,000 if we do a, a little bit of a, a lesser version of that. Uh, and the council showed a willingness, they do have concern about where the money is coming from because this was not budgeted for 2022. We do have contingency funds available, you know, for things like this that come up during the year. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of heartburn expressed about using those monies because, you know, that's, that's real money. We can pretend it's, it's a contingency that's available for us, it is, but it's actually, you know, dollars that the, the public has contributed over the years in taxes that went into our fund balance that uh, was applied to contingency. So we want to you know, be very careful with the public's money. Members of the, of the council also said that we need to get the compression team back together to look at how we can specifically or more specifically address the fire and police concern that's been raised about that gap being uh, narrowed between the management and non-management employees. So you'll likely hear about that in the weeks to come on my council preview and city administrators update with uh, Tom Lux, our communications director. A couple of other things, the next item I brought up was a coverage of additional meetings. You know, right now we, we cover a few of our meetings. We have a, a limited staff. Tom and, and David Ballerstein do a great job, uh, but they're only two people. They've got a lot on their plate to be communications director and communications specialist. 
And uh, so we cover the council meeting, the Board of Public Works, Finance, Budget, and Personnel, Plan Commission, um, Fire and Police Commission, and then we've added a couple for this year, Economic Development Board, and the, uh, I'm drawing a blank with the other one is, uh, the Utilities Commission. Uh, and we've done this because those are all bodies that, that really can make final decisions in some cases apart from the council. So they have statutory or code authority that maybe other advisory committees don't. But at the meeting back in late May, the council had asked us to look at maybe filming other meetings that people want to see. Uh, three that were brought up, two are city meetings, uh, Judiciary and Licensing Committee. They look at operator's licenses for bartenders and those kind of things. And then also uh, Parks, Recreation, and Forestry Committee. Obviously, they're important because they talk about keeping up and improving the, the parks and the zoo and our recreation programs. There was also uh, interest expressed in covering the school board meetings. Uh, the school board is not part of the city per se, but it's thought by at least many council members and some constituents as well that, that that's something that, that we ought to be doing uh, to provide uh, you know, viewers with the opportunity to see those meetings if they can't attend them. So uh, I brought this forward and the council, after a fair amount of discussion, agreed that we would begin uh, covering those three meetings. Uh, starting in July. Now, one of the things that was discussed is why just those? Aren't there other meetings that people would care about? We have Historic Preservation Committee. We have all sorts of other committees. But again, we have a two-person staff and, and limited time and resources to, to do this. And we also talked a little bit about what the viewership would be for some of those committees. I mean, would they be viewed by a lot of people or would they be the kind of thing that we do and yet no one is seeing them? So there was talk about everything from doing a survey of what people want to see to trying to track viewership as best we can from from uh, who goes online to, to look at the meetings. You may hear more about that in the weeks and months to come. But for right now, we're gonna start doing those th three meetings uh, going forward. Uh, we had two appointments to the Plan Commission, one which is finalized, and that's for Mary Bessler. Uh, Mary will be coming on board starting with the July meeting. And then we also had Kayla Marks, who was uh, put forth for appointment by Mayor Lois Teastrake. That was the first that the council saw of it, and there were no comments raised or questions about her. And, and that will go forward on June 28th now for final approval. And if Kayla is approved at that time, she would also be able to attend and participate in the July Plan Commission meeting. We had a couple of items discussed in closed session. I can't talk a lot about them, but I will say that one of them is a continued uh, conversation about the Marshfield Mall. I know from people that I talk to in my world, there's a lot of interest in seeing that mall project go forward. If we can get some new retailers into the mix, it would not be a mall per se, but it would be kind of opening it up a little bit more like what you see in Rib Mountain and Plover where the stores would be next to each other. Uh, and the developers, you know, trying to pull together his financing package, he's looking for some assistance from the city. That conversation goes on. I have nothing to report to you today, uh, but uh, the dialogue will, will continue and, and uh, hopefully things will work out to where we're able to see that improvement come to pass. But again, you need to know that the council is looking out for the best interest of the citizens in every way, both uh, trying to get more retail and, and, and commercial development but also being mindful of the, the use of the resources to which you've entrusted us. So uh, look for that to continue and hopefully we can give you some good news as we move farther into the summer. Well, that's all I have for this report. That kind of concludes and summarizes the council meeting of Tuesday, June 14th. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions or concerns or any ideas that come from this, feel free to contact me. My phone number is 486-2003. My email address, it's, it's on the website. Uh, I'll just let you look that up. Uh, so much great information is on the website. Tom Lokes and others keep that up so that it's got uh, current data on what we're doing here and how you can plug into it as a resident or property owner. So I want to thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the Post Council Meeting News Conference.